so basically the main idea we're sharing here is not just about the, the image quality, the refresh rate stuff. So I will show you here the, the system on the left hand side is 650 base. On the right hand side is 950. So I'm going to have totally exactly the same uh, characters on this map. So what I, want, what I want you guys to experience is the smoothness in um, the, the image quality and this kind of stuff. So, so are we do, we're doing a side by side comparison. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So Kepler versus Maxwell. Exactly. So All right. What you can see here is okay. The image quality is yeah apparently different. Yeah, because. Oh, sure. Are we running on the same settings on both machines? Or? Uh, no. Once you've boosted on the higher one. So, what I'm showing you is this game is running in um, default settings. Alright. The default settings with uh, 650. Alright. So, on this setting, of course, this game will run on, like I said, uh, the specific image quality set to uh, 83%. This image setting is like a slide bar. So, 83%. And um, what you can see it's a little bit blurry so it's not that perfect but some say 52 frame per second should be good enough right but actually yeah i'm not too familiar with this camera i think the grass is a little bit blurry from where from behind the camera so yeah i know i understand so what you can see here is what i want to show, what I want to show here is I mean, uh, beyond that image quality, we used to you know, optimize for GPUs. But you can see here is for this monitor, it's running at 120 Hz. So it's performance performance wise it's not good enough for six fifty. Can we can we put these in the same part of the map so I can use yeah, can actually yeah. do a like let me, let me try a comparison? Yeah, let just just approximately. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. There we go. Almost, almost. The the Maxwell card, the grass has a more detail and higher definition, and the colors is more saturated because of the details from from where we where we're standing. Yeah, it's more detail on the flowers as well. Sharper too. So what we see and these are both high refresh screens. Uh, actually, these two monitors are both support 120. Yeah. But for this system, because the performance is not, you know, yeah. the performance system is not good enough. So we need to re sync on to eliminate the material. Okay. So it's going to be limited to 60. Yep. Or sometimes even worse. Yeah. So yep. That's why you see starters. Here. Okay. Yep. But for this system, because the new GeForce Experience optimal settings okay. will help you to change the refresh rate. So we can guarantee the performance. Is always above 100. But if you still set to 120 hertz, it's gonna drop to 60, of course. The yeah. But what we can do here is use our GeForce Experience new optimal settings and change the refresh rate to 100. And then you turn VSync on, you can limit it and lock your frame rate. Right okay, at your that's the existing feature already we have. We have the adaptive VSync and the frame limiter. These are all existing features in the software oh, no, package. It's still a little bit different. Because for adaptive VSync, when you when your performance is lower than that refresh rate, you're gonna see you're gonna turn VSync off. You're gonna see tearing. But for this case, you make sure you know, you kinda of make sure your performance is always above this limit. And then you lock it at one hundred. Okay, so now you're saying you have a minimum limiter. So so always go above what you set it to. Oh yeah, it's always Okay, above. so that is it's new. So that is new for the upcoming software package and driver that will accompany this uh, technology. I would say probably uh, yeah, it's gonna be part of a GeForce right. experience. Because GeForce experience is gonna handle our video control panel. But at the same time, in the cloud, like say optimal setting libraries, it's gonna be with new like details, settings, information for each game. Can you give us an overview? Earlier you talked about, we had a press pre presentation here, you talked about the NVIDIA this time has gone after the setting that has always been in the driver, the pre-rendered settings, which is usually has been free for those who know their drivers. Uh, can you explain 
why have you why is this Nvidia is now talking about this feature and now why are you optimizing it? What's the benefit for the end user? Why Nvidia has gone after pre-rendered frames for the 950 launch, whereas before that has not really been a discussed feature that much. It's more been enthusiasts have been tweaking that through the Nvidia control panel. Okay. So just like I say, we figured that this max pre-render feature is actually can benefit. You, you know, we change this max pre-render frame, this feature, we can benefit the latency, especially for mobile games, which is, you know, most important game, especially, you know, when you talk about latency stuff. But we figured that not all the gamers knows how to go into a video control panel to do the changes and get the benefits. So we figured out for 950 in mobile gaming, this combination, because mobile gaming is probably, I'm going to say, the most common play the game generous nowadays around the world. And 950 is going to be the sweet spot, the most mainstream you know, GPU product around the world. So we want to do this combination. We want to have all our 950 potential buyers, gamers, to get all these features easily with our GeForce experience. Not only get like optimization from the image quality, from the performance, we also want them to play games with ultra low latency. With all these features, they probably never got a chance to get into a video control panel or two. We, from our point of view, in terms of casual gamers, we're impressed that you've offered this, you've gone further to offer additional optimization with this segment of users. But we have two, uh, let's say, branching points of that we're interested in. The first is, say, somebody who's a little bit more experienced and doesn't use GeForce Experience that much. How would they still leave the setting in terms of the manual setting? Should they leave it on free or should they tweak it? What, how should those sorts of little bit more advanced users go forward if they get one of these cards? I think, you know, for those advanced users, I think most of them probably get going to you know, go for it. Because from our point of view, we never touch the setting. We leave it at free because that's the default and yes. it's there for a reason. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I understand that. I totally understand that. But just like I said, you know, we figure that these features actually can help. But if we've got a promise, like I mentioned before, GeForce is not just a GPU or just yeah. a, a, a graphic card. Yeah. So, you know, performance is not only the only thing we want to deliver, we want to deliver experience. So, if you play games on GeForce, when we say mobile games, for say Dota 2, say League of Legends, if you can get better experience with lower latency, why not? So that's why we want to do this, why we want to change this. Of course, for advanced you know, users, they know, okay, change this, gonna affect this or affect that, how gonna affect his or her experience. Of course, be my guess, he can still do that. Of course, he's probably not gonna use GeForce experience to do his own game settings or video 3D settings. And of course, we figured that they got benefits. So we want to bring these benefits to ordinary, ordinary general. So those advanced users who play these sorts of games and they want to manually tweak it, so they should reduce or increase the setting? Yes, yes. So which way would they go with the setting? Uh, you mean the... The, the, the manual setting. Uh, the manual setting, you mean the... In the control panel, non GeForce experience. Yeah, it's, it will still be there. Yeah, but yeah. should they increase it or decrease it if they want to play these sorts of games of a 950? Uh, quite honestly, for the max pre-render frame setting, it was there. It's been there yeah. for years. And just, you know, we, we, we got to figure a way to... Okay, if we adjust this... How this gonna affect the experience? So we'll at the same time look into this. If possible, we want to add more into these 3D settings to help gamers. Just like okay, say so there is a there is a say a single rule that say okay, if you play all these types of free to play games, you should increase the setting or decrease the setting. So it's mainly game to game, is it? Yeah, of course it's game to game. So, so I can't, for example, tell our users, oh, if you play this sort of game, put the setting up or put the setting down. They have to, each game, they have to try what game by game to see where, to see which setting is the most preferable. And obviously you've worked that out with GeForce experience. Yes, of course. we got a huge lab in, actually, in, in Russia. So they're doing testing for us, all the configurations. So we figure which way is the best way to choose. What about high-end cards? For example, 960, 980, 980. 
how does that setting affect performance of these more powerful cards? I think um, I, I'll explain in two parts. The first part is high-end card playing mobile games. So Not necessarily mobile yeah, games, yeah. Just because just, this is part of your optimization strategy going forward. Yeah, so. of course, of course. It's just like MFA. Yeah. Yeah. MFA is part of the setting in, uh, in GeForce Experience right now. But actually, MFA is not in the in-game setting. Yeah. So we're kind of changed the video from the panel setting to enable MFA. It's still part of our you know, GeForce Experience optimization strategy right now. So in the past, we just do in-game setting optimization. But in the future, we're going to do not only the in-game settings optimization, we want to do NVIDIA control panel 3D settings optimization at the same time. We combine all these two together, we want to get a better experience. Yeah, that's our strategy. So pre-rendered frames by itself, tweaking that setting for a bigger cut is not necessarily... Uh, not necessarily the be all and all. You're saying there's more things that the enthusiasts should be concerned about than just that one setting. Uh, it's yeah. Because some maybe some people go, okay, now Nvidia is saying this feature is useful on 950. Then I have a bigger card. Maybe I should start tweaking it or use GeForce Experience to. Uh, either, you know, either they manually set it in the control panel or they use GeForce Experience to change their setting. Mm -hmm. So I'm just I'm seeing how things work out for the higher end. Uh, I think for high end we're going to have a totally different uh, say, um, strategy. strategy or, so that would be more that would be more in terms of optimizing the drivers and getting you know optimizing all the different shaders and the codes and getting latency yes, down from yes. engineering rather than figuring out the best settings because yes. those cards have more power and these cards don't have as much power so it's a different strategy to get the best gaming uh, experience on these different cards is it? Yes of course just like uh, for 950 we won't like turn max pre-render frame settings for for triple A titles yeah. but for mobile games of course we will do so for different game different GPU combination different combination we will have how does this strategy affect DirectX 12 does it make any difference with DirectX 12 or uh, for now the DirectX 12 is not part of the setting yet so but I'm um, talking about in terms of the software environment so is it equally as beneficial with DirectX 12 or just for now it's mostly DirectX 11 um, pointing towards DirectX 11 or I think it's like like uh, API independent so okay still, API independent yeah, we can still get benefits from different so yeah. okay so we've looked at today we've looked at lower latency with the uh, sweet sweet spot entry level cards we've looked at new uh, game streaming features where a remote user can remote control multiplayer via remote control for you so when can we expect those features to for public uh, testing uh, now we're aiming September to, to release this share feature but yeah stay tuned once we get everything we're definitely and those sure. would be for can family users that would have the same part of the driver they can use these features as well the older cards um, yeah of course this feature once we have this feature supported once we release this initial beta of course or like GTX gaming GPU will support this feature ok so the minimum requirements would be you have the, the appropriate network and you have a GeForce GPU that has the appropriate video uh, encoding yeah. for the for the game streaming. Yes, of course. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Thank you.